Hello Oracles, Oracle Tim here from Oracle Investments. Before we get started, I just want to thank all of our veterans here in the US. It is Veterans Day, so thank you to all the veterans for your service and to everybody from around the world because I know that uh, there's a lot of you from around the world watching. If any of you have served in your military in your uh, countries, thank you for your service for them as well. I appreciate everything that you have done for us. Well, the stock market tried to recover today from yesterday's bloody massacre and it kind of failed. Uh, the NASDAQ did come back a little bit. They ended up being green today. S&P was basically flat and the Dow was down about half a percent. Tesla had a great start to the day. Pre-market was over 1100. I'm thinking, oh man, look at totally rebounding. We still don't know exactly what Elon has left to sell. Uh, right before I started filming this, I took a look to see uh, on the investor relations page on Tesla to see if there was any updates. Haven't seen any. If I happen to see some later, I will definitely make sure I uh, mention that in tomorrow morning's video. But uh, as of right now, it just seems like the Monday and Tuesday sales were what we know about currently. And I'm sure there's gonna be more because based off of the numbers that he had in there, he sold off about 3% of what he's got. Uh, he did say he wanted to do 10% based on the numbers and tax bills. That makes sense that it's gonna be about 10%, probably seven to 10. So I'll keep you posted on whatever information I find out about that. But despite all of the early excitement with, uh, with Tesla, it ended up kind of just bleeding out over the course of the day and ended up down about a third of a percent. And as far as Tesla goes, I didn't see anything else wowing me in the news today, so not a lot to share. If you guys happen to see anything that uh, maybe uh, I missed, send it on over, put it in the comments, and I'll make sure to mention that in the morning. Um, but I, I didn't see anything really, really major going on today, so I'm just monitoring Elon's sales. A couple of earnings to go over. Uh, I did miss Palantir yesterday morning. That is ticker symbol PLTR. Uh, I do apologize for missing that. That's one of my favorites that I've been following. Um, their earnings seem to be good, seem to beat earnings. I'm still playing Palantir out uh, three to five years uh, to see how it goes. So I'm not sure why the stock fell, um, but honestly, when it comes to earnings, I don't really play them. The one thing I do like to play with earnings though is if a, uh, if a company beats earnings and they drop afterwards, I just need to find out why. Or is there something little that I missed in the earnings report? If not, and it just happened to drop randomly because maybe it was, you know, ran up into earnings and it dips, I love that opportunity to buy because usually, uh, not all the time, but more often than not, that stock that dips on good earnings is gonna rebound real fast right afterwards. So if I see it drop into the red after good earnings, I'll buy into it and pop back up. Sure enough, Palantir today recovered quite a bit. So they didn't come back to, uh, to where they were prior to earnings, but they had that nice rebound. And uh, for anybody who wants to do a quick day trade, that's a great opportunity to jump into there, make yourself a quick profit in and out, and you're good to go. Another company that I had that had earnings today was Paysafe, P-S-F-E. You can't win them all. Um, Paysafe I bought when they were a SPAC, they were starting to run up. Huge uh, potential ahead of them. People are saying it was gonna run to $50 a share. I was like, oh, this is great. I got in around like $17, cool. And then it wasn't so cool. And the stock dropped and dropped. And I was like, oh, but everybody is still touting it. It's still gonna be great. So I bought a little bit more to try and lower my, uh, my dollar cost average, brought it down, kind of bought it at around 11.55. That's where my dollar cost average was. And then today's earnings came out. They missed earnings, they missed guidance. Everybody just said, they're done. And so by the time I recognized it, this, the, um, breakers had tripped, so I couldn't even sell. It was down to like 440, and I'm like, you know what, I'm out. Um, sometimes you just gotta take your losses. Perhaps I could have played the three-day rule. Uh, the three-day rule is, you know, don't trade a stock within three days after the earnings. Um, you know, unlike, well, like I said, with Palantir, you know, if you see a dip and you wanna buy into it, great opportunity. But if it drops after earnings, let the dust settle. Let the dust settle, um, see what happens. So chances are Paysafe may rebound a little bit. It seems to have found a good support all day around 4.30. Don't know what's gonna happen from here. Um, in the short term, it's extremely oversold, down around 20 on the RSI. So it could rebound a little bit. 
I wasn't going to take my chances. I, I was done with the stock, um, already hit two bad earnings, dropped and dropped again. So I'm good. Um, I took my losses, took that cash. I'm just parking that cash and I'm going to spend that cash later on something else. Uh, when I see another opportunity, I'll use it and jump into there. Another one of the plays that I have that was supposed to have earnings today, but I didn't see any earnings yet was Sundial. That's S-N-D-L. Um, the cannabis plays for me are kind of, you know, um, they're so up and down. Uh, they're so, we'll call them moody. Uh, they have their moments that they're like, ooh, this is gonna be great. And they come out and you have like a three day window to make profits on it and then they're gone for a while. So I'm still negative on mine. Um, I thought maybe with earnings today it was gonna be good. I think in the future when they do legalize uh, cannabis nationally, we might be okay. Um, I don't know. This to me, I put so little money into it because it's such a cheap stock under a dollar. I'm like, you know what? I don't have a lot invested into it. I'm going to let it ride, see what happens. Maybe it boo, pops to 10 bucks one day and I make a quick few hundred dollars on it, whatever. I'll see how that one goes. Uh, if anybody happened to see earnings on this, please let me know because I haven't seen anything about it whatsoever. And uh, subscriber request, Tim Kernock was asking me to go over NVIDIA and my analysis on that. And NVIDIA is one of those stocks to me, it's like the Tesla that I didn't get into. Uh, to me, NVIDIA is sort of like the Tesla of the chip space. Um, I'm currently in AMD and I didn't want to put myself in, in both. I'm hoping AMD does the same thing that NVIDIA has done, but NVIDIA is clearly the leader. Um, they've been making these chips, their stock has run up split, hit the bottom, ran back up again, very Tesla-esque. Um, and I keep telling myself to get in anyway, and I keep not doing it. Uh, currently, NVIDIA is a little bit overbought. Um, it's it's uh, RSI is sitting around the 73 mark. So I'm not anxious to get into it because it just went on a, a pretty big run similar to what Tesla did. Not to say it can't keep on going, but just looking at the technical analysis of it, it looks like it will be uh, dipping back. I might use that opportunity to, to jump into it a little bit. I'm gonna pay attention to how it trades over the, the rest of the week um, tomorrow and, and then take it from there because I do wanna get into it. Um, NVIDIA is pretty awesome. They've got some great chips. I know they are working on chips and technology for FSD. So Tesla does their own. But all the other car manufacturers that are out there, despite the fact that we know Tesla is going to lead the way, there are going to be other manufacturers. There are people who are not going to want to work with Tesla and utilize their FSD. So they're going to have to find somebody. And if NVIDIA is going to be creating their own FSD, that's going to be a company that other um, legacy automakers might partner with to make this happen. So I think NVIDIA is going to be an awesome long-term play, especially in that space. I don't know if AMD is going to get into that space. It would be interesting to see in the future. I'm not sure. But my take on NVIDIA is kind of similar to Tesla, which is if you're playing it long term, there really isn't a bad price to get in. Um, that kind of technology does come with a high valuation, which could scare people away. But again, they're getting into technology that doesn't exist yet, so we don't even really know how to value that. So when you're looking at that kind of thing, if you're looking at it as a five or 10 year play, the price it's at right now is going to seem very cheap. So if you're gonna play it that long, go ahead and buy whatever. Um, you know, I would dollar cost average still, I wouldn't just dump a ton of money into it unless you really want to. That is your own uh, investing choice. Uh, but for me personally, I will probably end up nibbling on it. I might end up going with fractional shares just to dip my toes in the water on it, um, just so I can be in there. Because I would see them as they grow, splitting again at least one or two more times uh, down the road. But if you're looking to do more of a, uh, a swing trade or a short-term play on NVIDIA, I would probably wait a little bit, let it cool off, let it come back down and get, that, uh, get back into the not so overbought stage. Um, and then you could take a look at it there and see what you can do because uh, I don't, even if it comes down a little bit, I don't know how much more it's gonna push up, at least in the short term. One of the things that I did look into today was uh, fractional shares and how they work with a split. And it's, I've been looking at a lot of places. If anybody has better information than what I'm about to share, please let me know. But it seems like it'll go either broker to broker or company to company. And usually, like if you've got fractional shares, let's say you have a half a share of Tesla, it goes to do a five to one split, you're gonna end up with two and a half shares. 
If the broker allows you to have those shares as fractionals, you'll have them. If the company allows you to have those fractional shares, you'll have them. Sometimes the company finds it easier to just pay you off in cash versus giving you the fractional shares. So in a Tesla case, in that scenario, if you had two and a half shares, you may get two shares and then get half of a share worth of value in cash um, and do it that way. I, so if you have better information, please let me know. That's all that I can find on it. Um, I will know for sure when Tesla splits again because I do have fractional shares in Tesla. Um, I have it through SoFi. So when it splits again, I can definitely give you in uh, personal experience information on it at that point. Thank you as always. I appreciate you all being here. I, I really, truly, genuinely appreciate the support, the feedback, the comments, um, and all of you subscribers on here. If you have not subscribed, please do so. I genuinely appreciate all of your support uh, in growing this channel. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna go over some more Tesla information. Anything I can find out tonight, hopefully the um, any further SEC filings will come out so I can let you guys know about those in the morning. Otherwise, we will see you then. Thank you so much.